MG, we are about three weeks away from Father's Day, a day mm. that uh, you, with, with five kids in the house, no doubt you're going to get spoiled rotten. Well, I bloody hope so. <laughs> At this time of year, we love it because this is when books drop in anticipation of Father's Day. And there is one that rugby league fans, uh, wherever they are, this is a, a must read. Called Spud, the Mark Carroll story. And we are joined by the subject of the book on the line. Good afternoon, Spud. Oh, good afternoon, both you and Liam and MG. It's great to talk to you. Um, who, who would have thought I'd write a book? Tell you what, it's come across outstanding and a, a perfect gift for Father's Day. Well, I've known Mark Boxhead, Mark Spud Carroll for, <laughs> oh, since 19, 1983, I think I've, I met Mark Carroll. He was playing for St. Pat's, number six and I was playing for St Mary's number six and we were both the biggest blokes on the field and we used to love kicking field goals. So I think one, one day they beat us 2-1. And over the years that I've um, played the game, I'd probably count Spud in my top three blokes that I've met through the game. And to see this book come out, I've read the book, Spud. It's a fantastic read. It takes me straight back to, to memories. You've had a fantastic life, mate, and this is a, a great celebration of it. Yeah, I appreciate those words, MG. Like I said, it's, uh, a lot of people don't know, we actually do go way back to the old days. We were both five eights. So we had the same haircut. We had a bit of a mullet and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a minimum up, but we did everything. We chipped and chased. We kicked for goals. We went for line. We're just, uh, we were the two biggest blokes out there, and we bashed the hell, hell out of each other. And I wanted to play first grade. MG got the start before me, but I, it took me a couple of years to catch up to him. We set a goal back in 1990 when I actually left to go to South in 89 to make the kangaroo tour, and guess what we did? It was um, mm. That was a fantastic time, and uh, mateships always continued. The idea of you two as 5'8 is just, it's a funny thought to think about. But can I ask, how much did MG pay you to get that topless photo of you and he in the, oh. into the book? <laughs> There's some great photos. We had to put that in. Mate, what about that? We're all pumped up. We've got Aren't the you just? I've, like, I've, got the, I've got the gold chain around. I, actually, I think I had a football or a, or, a, or, a, or a boot there. But MG, got, I've always, I actually put him in my book as the biggest smile I've ever known. Yes. He always yeah. got, me into all, got me into a lot of trouble, Liam, if you can't understand. But one one. Or Dave and himself and MG got a, a so-called casual job down at the, uh, the the market. So it was a banana section. We're only supposed to be there you know, until nine o'clock. MG picked me up at five o'clock in his nice little WRX. But he got the nine o'clock lamb, and the bike goes, "Okay, guys, we're thinking we're going home. Hey, what do you want to eat?" And we said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, mate, we've still got a few more hours." And we said, "Fuck it, this. Oh. The boss pays for food, so we got two hamburgers, a liter and a liter, one point two five liter coke." And the bike goes, "Bloody hell, do you guys eat like this every day?" We, we go, "Every day, every day." <laughs> but the way it finished, Liam got the twelve o'clock. MG goes, "I've had enough." I said, "They'll solve." So I go up these stairs, I knock on the door, I go, mate, we've had enough, me and me mate, I look at him and shoulder, and has gone. Right, he's done the bolt. <laughs> <laughs> He, go, he looks at MG with a sorrowful eyes. MG goes, oh, mate, I love the job, but I've got to drive Mark home. And he dangled the keys at me. Oh, <laughs> shocker. Shocker, yeah. MG. Um, we quickly, oh. Spud, Spud quit his apprenticeship, and I quit my job I with did. my mum. And I said, okay, this is our new franchise. We're going to be banana exporters. <laughs> <laughs> we lasted two but, hours. I remember on the, on the way home, I was ringing up to get my job. I was working for Alkin. Thank God I got my job back. But, mate, what a day of uh, my life with MG in front of me saying, oh, this guy I've had enough. So. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about this book, Spud, um, and is that most most athletes, you know, if they've had something resembling a half decent career, they think, oh, I can write a book. Your book, you've got all the football stuff, but there's yeah. so much more in this book. You know, there's a chapter just titled "Meeting Russell." As far as you know, uh, putting the big names on the front, forward mm. by Russell Crow. I mean, that's a yeah. reason for people to pick this book up in itself. There is so much off the field that people are going to learn about you and your life and your career uh, when. When they buy this book. Yeah, thanks, Liam. Yeah, they just got together, mate. Like it's, it was like, yeah, you know, Adam Hall said, you know, we should write this book. So I remember it was COVID times. I'd go down from my house. There's a bit of an area where you're going to sit with water. I had a two is new on the hand. I'd have a beer every day, and we'd do one hour at a time. These chapters just started coming out, but the ones about Russell, um, me playing rugby league, and what he's done for me in life. But there's, there's chapters of uh, this one where I, I went in an arm wrestling championship <laughs> at Parramatta. I went there to go and buy a vinyl record. Ended up in a bloody arm wrestling champion. I ended up winning that day, representing New South Wales. But the crazy thing about it. Played called, if you see the photos, this guy called Scott Norton, he was a world champion. He wanted to come and watch me play under 23's footy. They said right. to me, can you pick him up? And I said, I can't. He won't fit in my HQ. Remember I had the HQ? <laughs> <laughs> I said, this bike's 140 kilo. So if you look at the photo, mate, back then with the days, I used to wear the trousers. So I used to wear the shirt. I'd roll the sleeves up, make your arms look bigger. I had arms like a pretzel. There's bigger arms on a clock. And... <laughs> And I had I had Carrera sunglasses with a bloody flat top. That will do me. Oh, but, I love it. Um, that was uh, no, just great memories. But I said Russell's been a massive part of my life. After I met him at South, you know, I was fortunate enough to go and watch someone work as a as a movie star. His vision for me, the 
open up a gym. He goes, what do you want to call it? Yeah. He goes, nah, it's got to be called Spuds. And he drew the font. And to this day, mate, his eye for detail is amazing. You can see where the South, the way their kid is. Unbelievable. Dots every eye, cross every T. And my gym has had the same font for now going on 16 years. Wow. Go and grab the book, Spud, the Mark Carroll story. It is available now. It's a perfect gift for Dad on Father's Day. Uh, Spud, a pleasure as always. We love hearing stories, Don't especially know. the ones that show MG for the absolute rascal that he was back in the day. <laughs> Congratulations on the book. Sure, and we'll mate. chat again soon. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Awesome, Thanks, mate. Buddy.